Will the United States see more landfalls this hurricane season? So we need to take a look at the Bermuda Azores high to determine that. And typically during the hurricane season, there's three different scenarios in which a Bermuda high could position itself. There's this first scenario, which would be the best case scenario for the United States. Maybe a little bit of a worst case scenario for Bermuda, but for the rest of the Caribbean, as well as the United States, this forces a lot of the storm systems to move well off the coast to the point where it won't be a threat for you guys, but those in Bermuda would need to worry a little bit more with tropical cyclones moving this sort of direction, which could move straight over Bermuda during scenario one. Scenario two is right in between the middle or at least the average between scenario three and scenario one, where we see sort of a middle ground where a lot of tropical cyclones move right in between Bermuda, but do come uncomfortably close to the, to the east coast. And this is a scenario that brings the most tropical cyclones to the mid-Atlantic and the northeast if we were to see a tropical cycle moves in this sort of direction and then there's of course scenario three which i think all around would be the worst case scenario because it affects the most people whether you're in the caribbean or the gulf of mexico and we even could see tropical cyclones still in this scenario still move up the east coast up to the northeast where this would impact the most amount of people and this happens when the bermuda azores high is well to the west and very strong during um the the main portion of the hurricane season right in between August and September. So we're going to take a look at several different factors that will determine how strong this ridge will be as it seems like a lot of the signs are pointing towards the ridge being a little bit further westward and a little bit stronger which could be a worst case scenario for the United States because like you probably saw in my previous videos it's expected to potentially become a historic hurricane season based on the sea surf temperatures and the La Nina so combining that with the fact of potentially more landfalls this hurricane season could spell a recipe for disaster. Taking a look at the sea level pressure for this month, we do see that for the, um, right over where the Bermuda Azores High is typically located, um, right over Bermuda, we do see that the pressure was actually lower than average, which would certainly be the best case scenario if that were to continue into the summer. But, we, uh, um, as you probably know, the Bermuda Azores High, and when it comes to weather in general, is just very variable. So, it could, um, we could easily see the pressure change into well above average, um, as soon as next month. So, although we're seeing lower than average pressures right over the Northern Atlantic, I do expect that to change, and we likely will ex um, see the pressure be a little bit higher to a point where we could see tracks a little bit closer to the East Coast. A big factor that could contribute to the Bermuda Azores high being a little bit further westward this hurricane season, pointing more hurricanes towards the United States and the Caribbean, is the La Nina pattern. And as we approach the summer months, we're gonna be more, um, we're gonna be in a stronger and stronger La Nina. So for any tropical cyclone that wants to form right over the main development region, the sea surf temperatures right over the equatorial Pacific are gonna say to those tropical, um, to those tropical and to keep calm honey i'm gonna stick around for more than a minute so get used to it which means that the cooler sea surf temperatures will lead to weaker upper level winds for tropical cyclones to continue to intensify as they move further eastward and it's more likely to enhance the bermuda azores high um, a little bit further westward to the point where we'd see a little bit more tropical cyclones with less upper level winds associated with cooler than average sea surf temperatures over the equator pacific which suddenly makes me worried that we could be in for many more landfalls right up along the east coast and the caribbean a map that best exemplifies this point is taking a look at the at la nina hurricanes over the past 30 years compared to el nino hurricanes over the past 30 years and we clearly see a pretty major difference not only of course when it comes to the amount of hurricanes that develop but also where they make landfall we see that typically during la nina hurricane seasons a lot of these hurricanes go um towards the united states making landfall in areas a lot further westward so when a hurricane forms during la nina years it's simply like a swish swish when making landfalls right 
over the United States where we, it's simply like just making landfalls easily during La Nina years compared to El Nino years where the, uh, much of the hurricanes move well out to sea thanks to uh, stronger upper level winds pushing the Bermuda Azores high further eastward and that would um, allow the United States to avoid a lot more hurricane landfalls which is definitely uh, which would definitely be the best case scenario but unfortunately we're going to be in a La Nina so the Bermuda Azores high will be a lot further westward and we're going to see a lot more swishes when it comes to landfalls in the United States. One of the better indicators on where exactly uh, Bermuda Azores High will position itself during the hurricane season is taking a look at climatology models like the CAN-SIPS model which is pretty much a computer model that combines a lot of the most reliable computer models into one model so it gives potentially the most accurate scenario when it comes to what we're going to see during the hurricane season when it comes to height anomalies and of course if you're in the oranges that's where you should expect the, the air pressure to be a little bit stronger and the, and the uh, the, the higher air pressure would be the main catalyst in steering a lot of these tropical cyclones while the blues would represent air pressure that's a little bit lower than average and as you can see during the month of September the most active month of the hurricane season we see a pretty strong amount of ridging or at least an above average amount of ridging right over the Bermuda Azores high region which makes me believe that this we're going to see a stronger amount of ridging that would be able to steer storms far to the west enough to impact the Gulf of Mexico as well as the, the southeast coast of the United States with maybe an, a, um, maybe an occasional tropical cycle moving up the northeast coast. So we're definitely going to need to um, take this into consideration as well when making this forecast. And even if we were to shift towards other months into the month of August, we see that the ridging is still quite strong right over the Atlantic and it should control contribute to, st uh, to steer a lot of storms closer to the United States as well as Caribbean which makes me believe that it might not only be a historic hurricane season when it comes to the amount of hurricanes and tropical cyclones developing in general but it could be historic when it comes to the amount of landfalls as well with a stronger amount of raging that's forecasted like this so definitely take that into consideration this hurricane season. Another thing that we need to take a look at is the sea surf temperatures anomalies because not only could that contribute to the amount of tropical cyclones we see but also could determine where exactly the ridge will position itself and first off with sea surf temperatures this warm over the northern Atlantic we're bound to see many tropical cyclones and many long lasting tropical cyclones where, um, to the point where many of you guys are wondering that it's so funny that that same name keeps coming out your mouth when it comes to some of these hurricanes out develop because and it won't be surprising um the reason why because the sea surf temperatures will be much warmer to allow these tropical cyclones to stick around for a very long time so you're going to be hearing that name quite a lot during the the same names quite a lot during the hurricane season but so that's one thing but another thing is that um, we clearly see that the main development region is experiencing sea surf temperatures warmer than average but what could be concerning is that where the Bermuda Azores high typically develops is where um, the sea surf temperatures are at least close to average or slightly cooler than average in sunspots and we if we see the sea surf temperatures is close to average or cooler than average right over the typical area of where the Bermuda Azores high develop that could mean big problems because that would mean that the Bermuda Azores high would more likely be stronger in areas where the sea surf temperatures are cooler because the sinking air won't have as hard of a time to sink down to the surface because uh, the air temperature will likely be cooler uh, along the lower levels to allow that and of course cooler air is a lot less dense than a warm humid environment like we're seeing right over the main development region so we need to see if this continues but I think that this as well will contribute to the ridge um, Bermuda Ridge being a lot stronger to steer the storms a lot closer to the east coast with the sea surf temperatures this cool the air temperature will be cool that promotes more sinking rather than rising and that will create a stronger ridge that will steer storms a lot closer to the Caribbean and the United States. So to conclude all this how many hurricane landfalls could you see 
in the United States. While it's definitely difficult to tell, and we need to put, um, I need to put a disclaimer that it's definitely far from certain we're going to see more landfalls than usual in the United States because, of course, weather changes very quickly. Certain factors change very quickly. But I will at least say more likely than not, we're going to see more landfalls over the Caribbean as well as the Gulf of Mexico in the southeast this hurricane season thanks to La Nina, which will help um, strengthen this Bermuda Azores high as well as the fact that the sea surf temperatures over this area are, are close to average or slightly cooler than average, which will also contribute to the Bermuda Azores high being a little bit stronger. And the computer models are also pointing towards that direction. So I could foresee quite a bit of hurricane landfalls, unfortunately, this hurricane season, thanks to all those factors. Um, so you definitely need to take that into consideration right up along the United States coast, the Caribbean, and even as far west as Mexico and um, as well. So definitely pay very close attention to this and any further updates in the hurricane season because it could be quite an active one but remember whether this hurricane season is well above your expectations or below your expectations um remember that all it takes is one storm to completely devastate your community and change your life and millions of other people's lives so don't underestimate the hurricane season just because um it might not meet your expectations so definitely remember to always stay prepared um, um for even um just one storm if it were to approach your area but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching